What is going on everybody? Matt Kluskowski here for another video. Uh, over the next 10 to 15-ish minutes, we're gonna take a look at three ways to improve the colors in your fall photos. Now, don't take that too literally because it, it's really three ways to improve colors. It's just, these are techniques that I happen to go to for my fall photos when the colors are not quite what I'd always hoped that they would be, which is just about every fall photo that I take, by the way. So uh, you'll find that these are uh, a mixture of Lightroom and Photoshop. And honestly, as you, uh, as you watch the techniques, you'll see that just about every photo editor out there has most of the tools that I'll be covering in here. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. I am inside of Lightroom right now, but you could just as easily be inside of Adobe Camera Raw or really any raw editor out there because they, they all pretty much do the same thing. Um, and what we're going to do is we're, we're in the develop module. We're going to go down to basics. So uh, this wouldn't really be uh, necessarily something that I just do for fall colors, but I generally will set the whites and blacks and that's going to help give you an overall contrast and color boost just to begin with. So if I hold down the option key on Mac or the alt key on PC, I can click on whites. Everything's going to go dark and I can drag that until I start to see some specs. I'm going to pull back because I know there's not really a big white point here. So I, I don't necessarily want to push anything toward white and then do the same thing for blacks, just option or alt click and just go the opposite direction. And, uh, and you get a couple of little black specs in there. It means you got a nice little black point and just those changes alone, um, will definitely help out from there. Uh, we'll head down here. I'll usually push a little bit of saturation. You have to be careful because saturation gets bad really, really quick when you start to crank it up. Um, and so it's, it's, there's not much you can do here, probably five, six, seven, eight percent around there. And then I'll usually, and this is, this is going to change based on the white balance that you shoot with. I, I generally shoot in an auto white balance mode or uh, maybe sometimes in a cloudy white balance mode, which is cloudy will give me a little bit of a warmer photo, but I'm almost always going to go up here to the temperature and make that a little warmer and maybe even cheat the tint a little bit more toward the red magenta area here. Now here to me is what the star of the show is. We'll head down to the HSL panel. And uh, this is what I was talking about. You know, you have something similar to hue, saturation, and uh, luminance in just about every program out there. What we're looking for is hue, okay? What, what we need to do is, is we need to help the colors that were not necessarily quite as far along as we had hoped when we were there. And so we'll head, it's gonna generally be in the red, orange, yellow, green, area here. Okay. So I'll try red. And when I change hue, it's basically going to change the colors of the reds here more toward orange or more toward a bright magenta reddish color. Um, can't go too far on there without it starting to look weird. So just pull back a little bit. Orange will definitely get some, some play with orange because again, um, what I'm trying to do is, you know, I like the reds and the oranges in a lot of fall photos. So do a lot of people. And so we can take our yellows and push them a little bit more in that direction here. Okay, I'll go overboard with it. So we obviously won't go that far, but we can definitely push our yellows and what started to turn orange in that direction a little bit more. And then yellows, again, we can have some fun here because we can take our yellows and push those toward some orange, which is gonna more give that fall feel uh, of a look to the photo. And then finally, we can take our greens. Okay, so things that were things that were green, we can help move toward yellow, which um, you know, again, and just depending on the photo, can also help give us that feeling of fall. But when you look at at the kind of those four sliders, and you turn the little toggle switch off right up here, that's before, that's after. It's not one slider in, in particular, but it's when you start to combine the effects of all four of them and how we can start to move those colors a little bit more toward the fall spectrum, um, we can definitely get a, uh, a big change in there. So uh, if I hit the backslash key, that's before and then backslash after. So that's with all of our basic settings as well as HSL. Uh, just to show you, I'll go to the next photo here. I'll run through everything really quick. Again, optional, I'll click whites, probably pull back on that one a little bit. Same thing on my blacks, a little bit of warmth, a little bit of saturation, not too much. Head down there to HSL, 
And then we'll just move that guy over. We'll move that. Oh, yeah, you can definitely see some more reds start to appear there. A little bit more yellows and take those greens and move them a little bit more. Pretty simple change, but it does change the feeling of the photo. Again, backslash key before and backslash key after. If you're wondering if you're using Camera Raw, um, I'll open this one up in Camera Raw. It's going to be the uh, fourth icon from the left side. Uh, it's kind of got like three bars there. That's where those HSL adjustments exist inside of Camera Raw. They do exactly the same thing as they do inside of Lightroom. So exactly the same uh, the same idea when it comes to uh, when it comes to those changes. So now the next one. Uh, the next one, I'm, I'm going to kind of show you this in, in a couple of different ways, okay? I'm going to show you a Lightroom version of it, and then I'm going to show you a Photoshop version of it because there's, there's some things that we can do. In fact, I, I'm going to offer you a, a free preset for this one. So I'm inside of Lightroom, and we'll go, well, you'd, again, go through your basic panel changes. I probably bump up the shadows, pull back a little bit on the highlights. You could of course go through HSL and try those and there's nothing saying you can't combine that technique from before with what I'm about to show you now. But there is a really, really neat little trick that if we go over to Photoshop, um, I'm gonna take this photo, photo, edit in Photoshop. Um, Photoshop has what it's called a, a lookup table adjustment inside of it. And there's, a, there's one inside of there that works so good for your fall photos. So I'll top over here. And when you go to your adjustments panel, which if you don't see it, just head to window adjustments and you'll see your adjustments panel. It's this little grid on the far right hand side, second row. You're going to click on that and that's going to open up a, it's called a LUT lookup table. All right. Without getting fancy, you don't even need to know what the, the uh, official definition of a LUT is. All you need to know is that when you click on the 3d LUT version, this top one, and you start to scroll down through here, there's a lot of presets. Okay, so something like, um, you know, if you want to go really crazy, there's, uh, there's soft warming, which is kind of a nice look. Um, you can go here night from day, definitely a different look. But if you scroll up a little bit, there's one called crisp warm. Click on that one. Look at what that does. Let's forget about the contrast for a second. Look at what that does to your colors. All right. Now, it gets really contrasty though. It's too dark. It's too dark in all the black areas and everything like that. So what you do is you go to your blend mode for that, this adjustment layer that we just added, you go to your blend mode and by going down and I love this, the, the new feature in Photoshop, but I know some of you can do it with your mouse wheel and all that stuff. I use a trackpad and it just, it's different now with the new version of Photoshop that when you hover over, you can see what a blend mode does. So don't write me a comment that says oh, I could do that all alone with my track wheel. It's, it's good. Um, anyway, so when we come down here, when we start to go down toward the color option, what we're telling Photoshop is I want you to apply the color from this layer, but leave the luminance alone, the, the, the brightness and the darkness. So don't make it as contrasty as before. And then of course you can go in there and pull down on your, uh, your opacity. Okay. So that's before and after, and you can control the opacity that way. That is a great, that, that little adjustment, that crisp warm one works so good for fall photos. So where does this tie into Lightroom? Well, inside of Lightroom, we can take lookup tables. And um, I have a video that actually talks about how to turn a lookup table um, from Photoshop into a profile that we can use in this profile section over here inside of Lightroom. So under the basic panel, and again, I'm assuming you're on the Creative Cloud subscription, so you need to be using the, uh, the latest versions of Lightroom to, to have this one. But over here under basic, you have these profiles. And when you click on this little profile browser, um, I've already gone in and saved a lookup table from Photoshop and loaded it into Lightroom. Again, make sure you go look at that video because that, that'll walk you through the whole process. But here it is, crisp warm. And what I also did was I was able to save the blend mode into that lookup table so it's not gonna be as contrasty as the original uh, LUT or lookup table that we added before. But this is a profile, all right? doesn't move your sliders. Uh, when I close this thing down here and I go back into my sliders, they're exactly where I left them. Look, there's no HSL or there's no saturation being done to this. So it is a profile. So here's the cool part. Um, this one's free. 
Okay, I'm going to give you a uh, I'm going to give you a link. You can head over to mattk.com slash profiles um, and you can download there is a if you scroll all the way down to the uh, bottom there, click on the menu. I think there's a free link there and uh, and you can download a free profile set. And inside of that profile set, you will find that crisp warm one that you can use inside of Lightroom or camera raw if you want to do as well. Now, quick word from our sponsors, which is me, by the way. Uh, if you happen to like those profiles and if you happen to like the idea of what they do, I actually have a big bundle that is uh, on sale right now. It's got um, a whole bunch. It's got four packs that each have like 20, some have 25 in them, um, different profiles. So you can, you can see them on the screen here. There's uh, four seasons. Uh, there's black and white. Uh, there's a landscape one and there's one for portraits and wedding. So there's some really interesting stuff in there. You can do things in these profiles that you just can't do with the sliders inside of Lightroom or Camera Raw. So uh, it's on sale right now. Hope you'll uh, swing by and check it out. Okay, so let's look at the fourth one. The fourth one is gonna be all inside of Photoshop. So let's go uh, take a look at a photo here. And so I use this one when I use this one when A, I'm not getting a good result inside of Lightroom and I can't really I can't really get as specific as I want with the colors. Um, or if I happen to have jumped from Lightroom over to Photoshop, whether it's for cloning and healing or retouching or whatever it happens to be, if I'm in Photoshop, then sometimes I'll just do it because I'm in Photoshop. I, I don't have a rule around this. It's, it's whatever's convenient at the time. Um, so the idea is, is I'm gonna go ahead and click on our layer here. We're gonna go up to the select menu. We're gonna go down to color range gonna open up a dialog box. And at the, the very top, you're gonna to see a little place where we can go in there and uh, choose different colors. So I can sample my own colors if, if my color's not listed here. But I'm gonna go down here to yellows because what I wanna do is I wanna boost the saturation of the yellows a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna go down here to yellows and you'll see if you look at the selection option, not the image option, but the selection one, you'll look in there and see that uh, it's got uh, all these, it's kind of giving you what it's going to be selecting, the bright parts or what it's selecting inside of here. So that's your, that's kind of your preview there. And of course you could go through, I could go into my cyan, you'll see it changes. I could go to my greens. You'll see there's not many greens in here. Blues will probably see something in the sky, but we're going to stick with yellows or you can always go and sample colors as well. Now from here we click OK. So what we have now is a selection of the yellows in the photo. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is head over to my adjustments panel. I'm gonna click on that hue and saturation adjustment right here. And then now I'm just gonna boost the saturation. And it's giving me direct access to those yellows. I don't have to choose a color inside of here because I've already selected the yellows ahead of time. Now, I can boost the saturation, I can boost the lightness, pull the lightness down if I wanted to. Um, I can even start to change the color a little bit. if I wanted to cheat it a little bit more toward a certain color there, but we're gonna boost the saturation. I'm gonna crank it up pretty high here just because I wanna do a comparison, all right? I wanna show you what happens. Let's hide this. Let's add another hue and saturation adjustment. And under master, we can choose yellows. So we can go directly target the yellows inside of here. But as I increase this, watch what happens. See how it kinda, to me, it's a lot more heavy handed. It could work, give it a try. I mean, it might not be heavy handed for your specific photo. To me, it's more heavy handed and it also starts bleeding into a lot of other parts of the photo, right? Now, there's some good parts about it. And down here, I think it kind of, it kind of takes a little of the dead trees away. So you might want to do this and mask it or use a combination of both of them. There's no saying that you can't use this layer here and you've got your mask and then take this layer over here and add a mask to it. But you'll definitely see it works in a different way. It's attacking um, more. It's not quite as refined, I guess is the best way to put it, um, as I find that the uh, select color range option is, okay? but. Obviously, give them both a try, see which one works from you. Uh, everything is gonna be different on your own photos, so that's why I included a few different ways to do this here, because one way might work for one photo, another way might work for another photo, okay? 
Folks, hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for stopping by. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, if you're interested in those free profiles for Lightroom and Camera Raw, or uh, you're interested in the profile bundle that is also on sale, make sure you check out mattk.com profiles.